And yes, this means doing exactly the opposite of what all of those tutorials and dev vlogs advise. I'm starting to work on my dream game. So somehow it is already 2025 and my dreams of coding and actively working on my dream game have still not been realized. I feel like the new year is always a time where I get reflective and think about the projects in life that have never really gone off the ground. And I don't think I'm the only one who does this. One project that has come up time and time again has been learning to code. In fact, this YouTube channel was very clearly one of my attempts to make this happen. Starting in 2023, I hoped it would be my drive to actually see coding and game development through. It clearly was not. I mean, just look at the consistency in those uploads. Three videos in a couple of years. Not great. And this last attempt with this channel was far from my first endeavor. I almost religiously get inspired to learn a bunch about a game engine, usually Unity, watch a ton of tutorials, devlogs, recreate the tutorial games, and then it all fizzles out. I want to say over the last three years, this cycle has happened at least three times with varying degrees of success. And the piece of advice that is most common to all of these tutorials and devlogs is to not start with your dream game. Which I get, it makes sense. You don't have the skills and knowledge to make your dream game right away. You need to walk before you run, but man, does walking sometimes get boring. My largest success was a Flappy Bird-like game where I went beyond the tutorial, adding different difficulties, music, sound effects, animations, high scores, and a character selection screen. I even exported it to my Steam Deck so that I could play it with family members who eventually became selectable characters in the game. The, the whole reason it's called Flappy Family. It was a ton of fun. The issue is the passion for these type of projects often fades, Working through these tutorials often begins to feel like homework as opposed to something I'm excited to progress. Slowly, I start working on it less and less, and then all of a sudden, it has been many months since I've opened Unity and my ambitions fade into the darkness. So what's missing from this process? I think the answer that I keep coming back to is a lack of passion or inspiration. I know that I'm doing these tutorials to learn skills to eventually work on a project that I'm passionate about, but I feel like the passion is too disconnected from the learning. My solution for this newest and hopefully final attempt to get my coding journey off the ground is to lead with passion above all. And yes, this means doing exactly the opposite of what all of those tutorials and dev vlogs advise. I'm starting to work on my dream game. With that, what you've been watching in the background is a map of the first zone of my dream game being created in Procreate. Does this have anything to do with coding? No. Is this even a good first step to developing my dream game? Again, probably not. However, this zone has been living in my imagination rent-free for several years, and making it tangible not only frees up my brain from feeling like I have to constantly remember it, but also gives me a starting point to enter into what I'm sure will be a very messy project of realizing my dream game through code. And this is exactly how I plan to proceed through this project. Is there something that I'm actively passionate about? If yes, then don't force myself to wait until I get to the right time to work on it, but instead let that passion fuel my drive to learn. This map really is a perfect example of this. I've never used Procreate before. I don't have a drawing tablet, but my wife had an iPad that I could borrow, and I wanted to render this map into more than just a pencil sketch in my notebook. So I used my current passion for this objective to fuel my way through some Procreate tutorials and certainly a fair bit of trial and error to eventually realize a working rendering of the first map in my dream game. I guess that leads us to the big question. What is my dream game? Well, it's a game that I've been thinking about for many years, making notes about it in notebooks, text files, Google Drives, pretty much everywhere. And really the big kickoff to this project came when I wanted to bring all of these notes into one place, Obsidian. Obsidian probably deserves its own video from me because it's one of my favorite new apps that I've been using to 
pull this whole project together, but essentially it is an excellent free note and organization system. The game itself is called Manaborn, and it'll eventually be a 2D side-scrolling RPG, assuming I can figure out how to make that work. As with many people's dream game, this game is inspired by games that made me fall in love with gaming while growing up. In my case, this includes many MMORPGs like MapleStory, RuneScape, World of Warcraft, Guild Wars 2, Wildstar, just to name a few. However, don't worry, even I am not foolish enough to embark on an MMORPG as my first game. So the dream is to capture a lot of the RPG elements from these games while mixing in some of my favorite features from other titles like Jack and Daxter, Hollow Knight, and many others. I won't go through all of these notes as I will explain the project in greater detail in my first true devlog, but here are some of the details I've been working on. A lot of what I just described about the game is captured on this overview note, including goals of the project, the game's hook, gameplay loop, scope, and deliverables. As mentioned earlier, one of my first deliverables was bringing any existing notes I had about this project into Obsidian, and that task has now been completed. I have notes about many of the core systems, including classes, combat, items, leveling, progression systems, story, the world, and even UI elements. I have a branching class tree showing when players will get access to each class, as well as some rough class mechanics for novices, warriors, magicians, and hunters. I've got maps for the initial world, including the nursery and the mainland that include key regions and the maps associated with them. The nursery has had the most work done to it as it's the first map, obviously with the rendered piece that we saw earlier in the video, but I also have a layout of the individual maps and how they interact with each other as well. I've got many of the nursery's NPCs and their associated quests created. I've even got many of the nursery's enemies sketched out with some of their data and attacks listed as well. Long story short, I've let my passion and creativity take the reins for the last couple of months. So what's next then? Well, I guess it's time to finally start up Unity again, to begin the process of learning, experimenting, and creating, this time with passion guiding my direction. If you're interested in following along for this project, I invite you to subscribe to the Could I Code YouTube channel. I can't promise how well this will go, but at the very least, I hope to do better than three videos over a couple years. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in my first devlog for Manaborn. Thanks.